we go into the evening. Um, what we have now prepared for you is a lecture about startups. Of course, one thing is to join a company, but the other alternative is, well, uh, Simon has the alternative of traveling around the world. But when you are back from traveling around the world, you might want to start your own company. And we have a, an expert here who uh, consults young startups in uh, Germany and back in many ways. And I know she has a very ambitious uh, presentation. I think you can, if you don't understand everything by reading, you have a chance of getting it. If you talk to the team of the travel and uh, you can stand here to detail them. So please come and show up, founder and the CEO of Vivo, which is one company, uh, will guide you into the startup phases and uh, motivate you to think about starting your own company. Come, please. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, well, I wish you to come along with me on a short tour into the world of starting up a company. Uh, maybe you have been to the Maybe you have been thinking how do I coach the fortunate young people and also the other one in the company, in the, in the country I come from, which is Germany, they get a lot of help in it. They help, help out by the municipalities, by the provinces, the state, the job agencies. Um, so they can get coaching on the way of the business side, because many have a good idea, but they don't know how to make that idea because of the lack of business administration background, which of course it's also needed on your way to make a dream come true and make it viable. So let me take you along on the road to how to get there. There is much more to say than is fitting to have an hour. You can get, as you said, uh, get said, the presentation, and if you have any questions, or when you go through it, you can contact me by email and I would like to help them out. I will bring you a short glimpse on what it means to be finding an idea, opportunity scouting, what it takes to be an entrepreneur at all. What about projecting and thesis of finding a company? Maybe you've heard about vision, mission and value proposition, so we will talk on that. And I bring you a sketch of how to design a business model. <coughs> we'll have a thought, a quick view about what it means to be forecasting your sales, what it means about asset, people, and organization to make the dream come true. Which tools you need to find your business case, and where you might be finding funding for the financial needs that you will have. So, how do you go about to embrace your world of opportunities? I suggest you should let, look out for and transnational clients. I mean, if you are IT persons, you can have access to communities, you can go to the internet and see what is on. Not here, but maybe somewhere else. And think of what that mean for your possibilities here in other world. You should see which problems are here that are demanding solution and think how you found problems uh, and solutions to these problems. See which momentum could be there from tech innovations, like blockchain as a word, but there are many other possibilities of that. From cloud industry, which gives easy access, easy development frameworks, and see what can make this easy for you to find something. Of course, you could also view what possibilities are there to help other companies in the way of how to leverage their cost efficiencies and think about how to have businesses to optimize. Of course, the very valuable way is to see which funding initiatives are around. You should see what the, the, the European Union is bringing along. They give you grants, they have funding programs. You seek to understand which um, areas are being funded to see 
if there is a possibility for you. Also, it is very clever to see what is working out of your country. This is called clone importation. So, see if the business model has been successful out and try to import it here. A good idea to do this is also to look at what works with French people. You all know McDonald's. That's easy. But there are a lot of other possibilities to bring a business model that has proven already the business value here to your country. And of course, you can see the challenge of upcoming systems to see some contents filling up how to achieve the possibility of that opportunity. To give you some examples, in countries and other parts, I've seen it in the stars. We know the trend of the nature bank and how it's for the lifestyle, which is around the district region where I am. What does that mean? This gives you possibility for a lot of time to enter the trust. But it must be the union and then the office is for the street for activities for the day. You can think about setting up a non-line education system, maybe to just help some of the trusts in the world. Well, giving down means that you have to have an entrepreneurial spirit. That not everybody is being forward at the time. You have to be careful. A preparation does not often pay the exact background as you have just discussed. And you can start with self assessment as the first step. Here is a little checklist to see if you are an entrepreneurial guy and it makes the resilience that uh, we have just heard about. It needs the sound is it needs the venue the venue has to work 50 hours a week. But they can live on the maybe hit on a small interest at the very beginning. But of course, the most important thing it is that you are a problem solver, that you go and quit for somebody to offer you, but you go out and search for the customer. And then you are setting your own goals and then you are following. Of course, it is not bad to have a solid financial background and at least get started in the initial place. So, go ahead and get some clients in this if possible and talk to them in the clients. And, of course, you have to ask yourself how much is on the risk if you are already in the job. Are you the one to make sure you can live without a regular income? And what about the part of the time? They support the start of the business. Following, of course, is a long term project. Typically, from research, we have uh, considered that there are four uh, major stages. So, one is ideation and creation phase. Typically, it is something taking about six months to one year. So, from a very first business idea creation, you will have to go into a feasibility check to see what is needed. You will have to think about going slow and risk averse to build up what is called the minimum viable product. And this is not only true in the IT world and the layouts, this is also true in the real world. You will have to try to validate it and design a business model that you will go into that. Come up with your business case all the financial parts and you will have to make sure that while you are in this space you have the idea of bootstrap funding which is live on small pocket money and get some sponsorship of that companies. Once you have done this you can access the startup implementation phase which is the core funding of the company. You will have to have first company here. Maybe you think of integrating co-founders and you will have them to do the job of establishing the startup operation and probably first go on a lean store. Your market entry and private market needs to be uh, organized and realized, and you will have to make sure you get access to your sales channels, and it's the most important ones. And it is a truth from research also that only about 25% of startup founders. Overcome this space. So don't be frustrated if you 
you are not making it in the first time. Many try, learning from their failures, and go a second time and succeed there. So this part of the definition is typically is the things uh, from one to three years. You make that, you will go into the so-called establish and growth phase, which is usually from the third to the sixth years after you have started the education. Here you will expand the staff, get into a stable organization. Hopefully not this to see more demand growth. Also formalize your processes and your methods of work and see stable cash flows. And then also of course try to strategically plan on the next phase, which is scale up and expand. And for this next phase, which is usually after your third or sixth year, you will need to be a second time without. Because that will be more than that. You maybe have heard of the summary from the economic and public, mission, vision, and value proposition. So the very core of your idea is to give it um, the framing of what will your company in our company stand for. Which value does it give to society? And what would society miss if your company were dead? The vision gives the whole scorecard and roadmap for the next five years. How will you make that mission come true in the real world? Which strategic goals do you follow in this period of time? And you will have to come up with a value proposition where you formulate, <coughs> hey, which problem? Do I have to solve at all? Which solution will I provide? And what is my product and service solution plan to help to a certain, to a certain uh, customer base? So I think in your product and services, usually you will try to define what is your core product or maybe even a portfolio already. So you will ask yourself and hopefully find the question, which problem do our offerings actually help to solve? And this is the story we need to tell. Because once you will talk about marketing, and in the marketing you have to make all the communication that founds this. Today's customers will not just buy a product, but they want to believe in the values that are behind it. So you make it clear which solution do you actually provide to such problems that you are trying to solve. And then in the next growth path, you will ask yourself, okay, among this core product, which answer of services can I read that give more problems to the <coughs> but of course give also more paper and increase in your sales opportunities? And uh, in the third stage, you will ask yourself about product and service diversification. So given that you know I have developed a customer base, the question is, how can I make more money on the same customer base? And on the other hand, you will ask yourself, how can I increase my customer base by maybe diversifying my product from the base that I have already built infrastructure for? So here an example is done by a customer relationship uh, provider who will start up maybe with a core product which is just inbound core service. But then in a second step, we add email and um, letters <laughs> to finally have the plan that in the five year step, come up with a self-service platform as the service with all the IT infrastructure that is needed for it, to give you an example. Of course, it is relevant to be clear about your target customer segments. So, will you have business customers, institutional customers, or will you have end customers, individual ones? Or maybe you have both ways. You need to determine which characteristics define these customer segments to be able to tackle them, to find them, and to better communicate your service of the proposition. So you need to think about which purchase goals do they have? What is their behavior? 
cool. Somebody said that it is shutting down. This is a problem. <laughs> and uh, you will have to see which service experience do they have already, how can I optimize, and which price sets do it. You will have to see which segment priority you determine, how big is the size of the segment, and which space potential does it create. Here, for example, it would be the segment of a hospitality provider, tourism information, current companies, and outdoor activity providers, who could be the customer base for this customer relationship that it may provide. I hope somebody is caring for this message. <laughs> so, next step is actually to see what market are you heading into, and what is the market structure. You will have to define which geographical market are you testing and what forces actually drive you into. The presentation is done. I will try to do that. So, in the market analysis phase, you will see about which demand. Here it is. I'll suggest this is done. So, I go and pick this up. Thanks, Gary, for giving me the hint. <laughs> so, you will find on the demand side, who is actually already there at the customer base and what is the size of the services or not? Why? On the supply side, you will ask yourself, who is already a participant here? Is actually my competition? And what does the competition do in the moment? You will have to see which sales do they already accomplish? So what is actually the market? And how does the market go? And which economic indicators do influence the market growth? Also, you will have to consider what in this market industry are actually opportunities and what are threats. So which is coming up that gives you a chance and what is there that you have to be sure that you are, let's say, risk um, averse against. And of course, you will have to see about your market volume and your market growth. These are numbers that later on you will need for your business. Next step on your road is competitive analysis. <coughs> Here it is very helpful to build up a stretch and have some criteria which usually are what is the location and the market region of the competitors that you find. What is their legal structure? What is their actual product portfolio? Which ancillary service do they already offer? So that you can see if you have a possibility to add it. What is the actual price position? Of course, you need to know price comparison to know where to start on your own. You have to see which sales channel and sales tactics your competition is already using. And tackle their market customer relationship management because they're out in the market already, so you can research. And of course, make sure you understand which quality of service levels do they already support. And the very important thing is you have to make a scenario what does the competition do and yet one thing you are in this market and new clients. So the economy student among you might have heard already about SWOT analysis. This is a tool that helps you to understand where you have on the own corporate focus strength and weaknesses and where your environment, that means the competitors that are already there, um, together at the market bring opportunities that can address. So on the strength, Side. You might, for example, come up that you want to have a higher commission. That you want to be communicating with state of the art methods, which of course then you will have to implement. That you enter the market with very competitive pricing. And then if you are a startup, of course, on the weakest side, you will have to say, first of all, you don't have any brand reputation yet. And you might have a very low market. Budget. So, you know, you can tell you about 
You might have the issue in stable processes. And you, you are very low on your research and development time. While you might find opportunities, for example, in upcoming <coughs> technologies, for example, for remote work, which gives you the possibility to find employees that you don't have to have office infrastructure for. Or it might be an opportunity to see about the training funds, something that hasn't been discussed here at all in the panel before. But there are a lot of possibilities that you can use to. And it's very supposed to be that you have somebody from the group coming and bringing the business skills here and something of the company, and you may maybe employ by this, but you have missed out the chance to start on, on the same topic. So it is not just a way, but to also be quick. So all in all from this, you will have to derive the so-called soft strategy. So, which certain opportunities actually give you a competitive advantage that you could do one cent to enter the market? And which weaknesses are absolutely true to overcome so that you can have promising opportunities once it's already. Based on your competitive and market analysis, you will have to come up with your own competitive strategy. So here, actually there are two main ways to go about it. One is you decide to enter the market to be a cost focus or cost leader that means you want to compete on cross. The other alternative in general is you want to have a more challenging customer segment oriented product. So you compete on quality product differentiation. This is all in a nutshell the two paths of decision making that you will have to take. But once you have taken it, you have to go all the way and you have to put through on your brand decision, on your product and services, the pricing and the promotion and place. It has to be completely aligned to your strategic goals. Here is an example I have taken the focus of new on the differentiation part, going for quality, argumenting with innovation, <coughs> which is high tech place, I say of the outputs which are reliable and capable to your customers. And on the product and services side, that means different here for niches. And if you want to do this, you need a course, top-notch product management, research and development, and an absolutely orientation and customer experience. For the price, you have to decide not to go on the price of the to end the market. So here, you could decide to achieve only a pricing against a competitive and competitors in the, se in the second quarter. So, not at the highest high level, not at the lowest level, but somewhere in the middle. And of course, you need to make sure that you have an ongoing competitive price monitor to know what the market is doing. And on the promotional place side, you could decide to go to online, to webinars, and to say that everything is and of course you will have to have your marketing planning department along with this differentiation strategy. Sales forecast would be the next thing to do. You have your customer segments, you have your market, and now the question is, how big is actually the market and the sum of all the competitors who are already doing sales? This is the presentation here. How big is each customer segment? Because you will have to focus on each segment separately, which is represented by this slide. And you will have to see what is the market growth for your achievement of share. Here, it is represented by the research on the market growth and each of your customer segments. This is the fundamental base, and uh, it by law forecast assumption in a best case, a probable case, and a worst case. Scenario, come up with your same forecast, which should be a three to four years in, a, in advance <coughs> forecast um, framework for each of the seven. This is the base that you will have to have for your financial plan. Of course, 
less that will be how what is necessary, so what and who is required to make it all possible. So what do I do? Sorry, what do I do? To go to market? What do I need to go to market? And which costs do these assets and people actually apply? And where do the leads come up? So you will have to do an investment and personal plan to see which investment you see. Some of them are listed up and an example here. And which are typical for the industry you are going into. Which infrastructure needs does your operation actually require? So you need to have some knowledge of both of these or get advice on it. Which IT applications are necessary to go to market at all? And you have to decide which assets maybe you don't need to buy, but maybe can be invented. Um, or at least buy a software as a service, which is an out of the market already. And of course, you will have to plan the critical management and key staff roles that you will have to um, have in place once, once the key staff uh, to operate. So all of this will be brought into your operational cost base. One very basic um, element of your financial planning. And if, of course, you will have to train your sales plan and your marketing plan and to budget that as an important proposition. So organization is also, of course, very relevant. And you will have to predefine your organizational structure. Here you should, of course, start with like hierarchy. You should think about organizing in which functional teams. And you should already define the relevant headers and also consider co-finding to bank up. Maybe you cannot do it all alone. So then you have to do your planning against target costs. Because of course your budget at the beginning will be limited. Your hands off, which you will be employing or getting as co-finders, it's important that they have an uh, actual to do attitude. That they do not come in boss, but be sure that they know to do the things and do it at the very beginning before you can bring up more employees. And you will have to think about how you can initialize by freelancing and bringing in part time employees for not to raise your personal cost too much. So, to bring it all together, means to elaborate your business model. This is what you will need to be able to keep with getting access to some funding. So you need to, of course, create an altogether paper and the typical content of the business plan that any bank, a venture capitalist, will be expected from you, will have the company's analysis, the marketing we have just saw. Your description of your product and services, what you will be making money with and how. How you operate. See what is the result of your competitive analysis. See what is your customer segment definition. See how you are about go about in your marketing to acquire and actually also how the customers want to have a product. Then you need to describe already what steps did you already do with success to get the somebody who is going to give you some money and support, see that you have already done some steps. You will have to um, give an introduction to the management team that you have, and you will have to make sure that you have all the financial, the financial and the balance sheet already prepared. So, here come the costs, here come the sales plan that you have already brought up, all the capital investment, how much operating costs you have forecasted for the four years <coughs> on to come. You will have to calculate what will be the profit side out of it and which cash flow comes. 
So this is, of course, a vast amount of work to do. And you can count on it that in my uh, consulting that I do in coaching for people who want to do a startup, which is usually a small business startup, all this takes typically is a three months full time of work to get it all together. But if you want to go real, if you really want to sound and if you think you want to get um, financial support, this is the absolute must you have to come up with. So often this is the most critical thing. Why all of this process has to be made in this very appropriate mm, professional manner. <laughs> if you need to find capital funding and it goes on a debt finance, you will have to prove that you have a business model that actually is worthwhile investing. This doesn't matter. If you go in the private investment sector, at the beginning maybe you will try to get money for the first step, for the ideation phase, and you will have the help of friends and family just to be with you and take the risk that maybe the money is gone. This will not be true when you go on and try to get venture capital investors. Because the venture capital investors, they will come only once you are already in scaling the startups. They don't want just to solve, they want to see the truth that the story also gets numbers. And then they are easy to walk in. But you will have to tell them the story as being a design for <coughs> Also, there is the wealth and the possibility of public funding. And this is there also to you, here in Albania. So check out what European Union is already offering you as a grant to be a member of the European Union because you already qualify if your business model is valuable. So they have an early stage fund which is called end, and they have a challenge fund, especially in the area of IT um, and um, yeah, in the main part. It's, uh, it's finance funding and it's IT um, funding. So here are some of the programs that you should check to see what possibilities are there. And maybe, this is an area I don't have to know about, but you can research it. Maybe there are national and regional, regional programs. I see a headshot. Well, then you have inspiration that something like this might be created. So, of course, there is the normally known thing that is that finance from back in the city. But be sure, this is the hardest way to get money. Because all of the banks, are um, controlled and they have their hands in chains. So here you have not only to tell your story in an absolutely professional manner, you have to have a very proven story to be um, marketable. <coughs> so here you will only talk about this in the face of scaling this time. But the good thing is that you have the possibility that crowdfunding challenge this and see what you can make out of it. So here I brought you some inspiring benchmarks for those who did it. This is a German startup proposal that gives you a summary of many that have been um, getting there with actually public funds. Um, you can see this from the crowd and mobility tech unicorn list, so the ones that have been made that is a worldwide um, actually research focus. And of course, there are some examples from those who failed. But this is a very good lecture to learn from them. And there is a lot of research out there why startups fail. And I advise you not to ignore it because you will not make these changes once you get them. So that what I have to tell you that is question time if you have any time for it. And if the time is not here, I invite you to use the opportunity later to ask me anything that you might want to know. And you can access me by email if you want. I will try my best to give you an answer. Thank you.